everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I am doing my first rice planting of the season. Now I love growing rice, but I want to give you some tips before I show you the how-to part because I'm not growing enough rice to make it so I never buy it from the store. That's not the point. I'm growing rice because it's a unique plant that most people have never experienced before. Dehulling the rice for purposes of eating is actually quite complicated. So my number one recommendation is to just adjust your expectations. Grow it because it's beautiful, because it's unique, and frankly, the birds will eat the seeds so you can just grow your own bird seed. Now, where does rice want to grow? If you have really wet, sunny areas, you can grow it in the ground. But for most people, what I would say is get a large pot with no drainage holes, fill it up with compost, and site it in an area with full sun and easy access to water. Rice wants hot, hot, hot conditions and lots of water, which is why a container with no drainage holes is ideal. Don't put it in the shade, it's not gonna grow as well. Rice needs full sun. Remember, this is a grain that in you know agricultural environments, it's in full exposure, just like in a field, except that they are grown in rice paddies for water capturing. Now, timing for sowing your rice seed. Rice is a tropical plant. It wants hot, hot, hot soil, hot air conditions. I usually, in zone seven, don't recommend planting rice until after Mother's Day, so the middle of May. Here in zone eight, they're already getting into the upper 80s and low 90s. I think that it's time. They can get this started now. The process for planting is really easy. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. But remember, planting rice too early in cold soil isn't going to benefit you at all. In fact, I did an experiment in 2020, planting rice every two weeks, starting the middle of April, all the way until the end of June. And the rice I planted in June far surpassed the rice that I planted earlier in the season. That's because in June, it never had cold temperatures to contend with. Cold temperatures will really slow down the growth, the growth rate so if you're in a colder climate like zone seven in north, wait, wait until you are consistently hot and absolutely frost free. Again, here in zones, zone eight and warmer, I think that you could go ahead and get your rice planted at this stage. Now, I always recommend filling your container with compost, not potting soil. And the simple reason behind that is compost holds more water so you won't actually have to water it as often. Remember, rice wants to be in constant saturation until the seed starts to dry. So from sowing all the way until the end of summer, you are gonna want to keep water in your pot. Now, what about mosquitoes? In general, I haven't had a lot of mosquito issues, particularly once the rice plant is actively growing, but you don't wanna have mosquitoes form in your pots the simplest thing is to use the BT dunks or the little BT chips. You can find all of that at a box store or a garden center. BT is just Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a bacterium that will prevent mosquito larvae from forming. You could of course add this to things like bird baths and you know saucers under pots to prevent mosquitoes from being able to grow. Same thing goes for the rice. It is not systemically absorbed. It's totally organic and safe for you to eat. But remember, I am not growing this rice for the purpose of bringing into my kitchen. I am just growing this for the novelty, for its beauty, and for its wildlife purpose of feeding, bird, feeding birds during the late summer season. All right, well, this pot filled with soil cube is extremely heavy. And this is not actually going to be where it lives for the summer season. So my dad has this really amazing appliance cart, also known as a dolly. I'm assuming he bought this from Penske. It's way more robust than what I use. And because this container is already so heavy and we haven't even watered it, I wanna make sure that you work smart, not hard. Nobody should get hurt. So we are going to move this into place and then we will get the seed planted water it in and the magic will start to happen okay so dad you actually have multiple dollies that i have never seen before explain what you have okay this dolly 
is very lightweight and especially good for climbing stairs. Push the button, release the handle up to the length, turn it around, and just push the foot down. You can see the three wheels that are on here and show you how easy this is to roll over an obstruction, whether it be stairs or whatever. Okay, lock these into place. Coming through a doorway, the wheels actually change and rotate and climb the stairs to come in. Now, if this had weight on it, it obviously would be, you know, be much better, but this works very well coming upstairs or downstairs. And amazingly, very lightweight. Where did you buy it? We actually got this at Costco. But um, I've seen them at, uh, at Home Depot and maybe even Lowe's. But this is a, an item when they get them in, they don't last long. So if you find one, grab it. There's also some screw holes on here that will would enable me to extend this platform out so I would be able to handle larger pots and things like this, like it's on the other dolly. And I'll show you how that one works. And to fold this one back up, all you do is push the, push the handle to go down, flop it up, and hang it on the wall. That's awesome. Yeah, this is really wonderful. Moved a lot of stuff with this. How have I lived 43 years and not known about this? I think it's probably a more recent, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably a more recent uh, invention. Now this particular one, what you'll see is, uh, let's take this over to its resting spot. Okay. And then we'll take the pot off and show you how this was put together. And yeah, did you buy this from Penske? Uh, yeah, actually I did, they were going out of business a friend had a dealership, and uh, actually he gave it to me. Oh, wow. So this is even better because it has not only the, the refrigerator um, section right here that you could you hook on, and two straps that would be able to bolt around it, which I haven't needed to use it for that. But for the pots, this is absolutely wonderful. It has a folding arm that comes down that extends out that allows you to put a piece of plywood down and haul a larger... Uh, a larger container so here we are and like this pot is super heavy very heavy and unfortunately we're going uphill <laughs> pushing or pulling works very easy set this in place just kind of wrestle it around I don't know whether this is going to be planted in here or not. It's not. That is a uh, part of the discussion we're okay. going to have. <laughs> and you can see with this, I don't have this plywood bolted. It just sat there. There's the leg, the foot, that folds up, and there you are. That's incredible. And it's true. I mean, it is an appliance cart. So does Home Depot and Lowe's sell this? Yes, they do. They do okay. have one that's very similar to this. Um, uh, they actually have a... A, um, a, a better type that has legs that kick out and lock into place so that when you recline with a heavy load it can be moved around like this and it's stable because it has wheels on the back. That's that brilliant. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thanks for that demo. That's super helpful. Remember everybody, work smart, not hard. Don't hurt your back moving heavy pots. Yes. Nobody's got time for that. <laughs> and the pots are heavy. The pots are very heavy. So now for the planting part. You might be wondering about this papyrus. And I was thinking yesterday, because my mom had four of these, and I thought, oh, that would be such a cool addition to the rice container. But then I started thinking, this is not the giant papyrus that I grow at home that's often sold as King Tut. This is more of a, a smaller to medium sized one and the rice will actually overwhelm this. So I've decided against having this mixed in and instead I'm gonna just do a monoculture of rice which is actually really beautiful. Um, you know, remember rice is a grain, so it's a grass. For most of the summer, it's just gonna look like blades of grass. Cats love nibbling on it. 
I have not had issues with deer and rabbits and groundhogs eating my rice, mostly my cats. Um, in fact, the little one, Ava Grace, just like she does the barley in my rice pot, she'll often create a donut hole where she sits in the middle and she like naps with it around her and then she nibbles on it. Um, I happen to think that's kind of cute, so I'm not offended by that. Now, the process for planting is super simple. Once you have your rice seed, and remember, I sell my rice seed at in-person events only. So, um, you can find rice seed from online suppliers, just ask Google. And um, what you're gonna do is just scatter the seeds right on the soil surface, just like this. And one of my containers, I do one ounce containers of rice seed for $5 a piece at in-person events only, no mail order. One container is enough for a pot this size. And I think this is probably a 10 gallon. Mom said she got this pot from um, uh, Big Lots. Ordinarily, if you were gonna plant in this container, you would drill holes in the bottom, but this pot does not have drainage holes yet. So it's perfect for the rice. Now I have learned over the years that it's actually better to not put mulch on top because all of it just sort of like pops off as the seed germinates. So instead you just kind of mix the seed into the soil and with the warm temperatures that they have coming up, I suspect that this will actually germinate probably within the next three to five days. And once it germinates, Mates, uh, it will, you know, it'll sprout just like grass seed. And then basically you'll just be keeping it moist. In the early days of it germinating, it obviously doesn't have roots all the way to bottom. You don't necessarily need to keep it fully saturated. So I'm not actually gonna water this in at this point because the soil is moist enough. And probably by the end of the week, I will tell mom, you know, make sure you give it some water. If you get a heavy rain before the seed is germinated, you can actually just tip the pot to drain some of the water out. I realize I say tip the pot and that might be harder, but you know, literally just like that so that the excess water will come out of it. Once the seed is germinated and established, you won't have any issues at all. And um, often I will do my rice seeding, just looking at the forecast to see are there any major you know, weather systems coming? If not, that's ideal uh, because you do want to make sure that your seed germinates and doesn't wash away. Like if you were to get the three inch rain, this would fill up with water and potentially spill over. So, um, you know, pay attention to your weather report when you're, when you're sowing your rice seed. And again, make sure that your temperatures are well above freezing. Rice does not like cold temperatures at all. I mean, it will die with frost, but even temperatures in the 40s and low 50s is not ideal for rice to be able to grow effectively. Rice is a true summer tropical plant, so heed my warnings, you will have a better rice growing experience if you wait a little longer until your temperatures are consistently hot. So what about fertilizing? Okay, because this is growing in compost, not potting soil, Remember, I recommend growing in compost because it holds more water and nutrients. You're not going to need to add like Osmocote or some kind of slow release fertilizer. Instead, what I do, I apply fish emulsion about once a month. I just, you know, pour a couple of tablespoons into a watering can and then water it in. Fish emulsion is just really great. You can also use kelp meal if you don't want to use fish fertilizer. But these natural uh, fertilizers are really the best thing for rice. Actually, this is what I use for all of my container plants. Um, it's absorbed both through the foliage and through the root system. And once a month application is more than enough. So you can just put down the blue stuff and invest a few dollars into, you know, kelp meal or fish fertilizer. And this will do everything that you need for your summer container plants. Well, I hope you'll be inspired to try growing rice if you've never done it before. This is a really easy approach for growing it and it's going to be a high impact container all summer. Again, if you can visit me during my spring open garden on Saturday, May 7th from noon to 4 p.m., 
I will have one ounce packets of rice available for sale. And like I showed you, that's the perfect amount for a large pot just like this. I'll also have soil cube available at the open garden. So it's your one stop shop for all things rice growing. Well, if you found this video to be helpful, share it with your friends, give me a like, and be sure to subscribe to the Bree the Plant Lady YouTube channel. And remember, this is the first of many videos that I will be making over the course of the next five to six weeks all about growing rice. It's one of my favorite things to do in the summer, and I hope that you will find it half as entertaining as I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.